So here is the John Deere 310C. You've never seen this machine before on our channel. This is old school DDMB. I ran this thing uh, 14 years ago, something like that. It was still not the nicest machine 14 years ago, but uh, I still have a soft spot in my heart for it. So I'll come around to the back here. No quick attach. Uh, it's never had a quick attach. I've, you don't see too many C-Series John Deere's with it. So you have your two dog bones to the back pin there. It doesn't take grease. Uh, that's a non-greasable pin. I don't know why John Deere did that. But, uh, I mean, it's tight. It works. Whatever. Don't fuck with it. So we've got our bucket cylinder here. We've got a nice little two-foot bucket with no teeth left on it anymore. It's just shanks now. Cool. That's, that's I'm sure, good for it. Anyways, as you can see, this machine does have the four-foot-long extend hoe Got these huge hydraulic lines for the bucket cylinder. And as you can see, the famous uh, triangulated box section boom with the lift cylinder inside, which is a pain in the dick. And these pins, I remember that the pin up in the top for the extendo hole, that pin walks in and out. As you can see, it's walked out part of it now. Oh no, not completely. Anyways, that pin walks out on these older extendo hose. So the extendo hole that holds the top of the cylinder in for it, they just fall out. This machine, I had this extendo hole fall out on me on the road once. And that was really cool. So, come down here. You got your swing tower for the backhoe attachment. Uh, these machines, especially uh, later into the D series, they tend to break and crack. You can't weld them up. No matter how much you try, you can't weld them up. You can give it a good shot, but uh, yeah, it's not going to end well for you. Uh, you can see here we've got the valve block. So you have your two sticks, your wobble sticks. For the controls, it's an incredibly simple design, an incredibly effective design. Got our stabilizers here. I mean, if you spend any time around new backhoes, you know the stabilizers now come up to like here when they're up. Because they have a nice wide spread. They're like a 10 or 11 foot wide spread on some models, I believe. These machines, 8 feet of spread. They're not... The most stable but uh, they work has the flip over pads this pads broken has been broken for a long long time uh, that pads in one piece you can flip it over so the triangle end is pointed down into the dirt makes it really nice you got the pad end where they used to have rubber on them so you could sit on asphalt not mark the asphalt up too much uh, rear tire uh, these machines uh, they have an 87 inch wheelbase on them uh, they've always been kind of a they always seem like a long backhoe case was always quite a bit shorter so now they're a little nicer on job sites but uh, i don't know figured that was a random fact gorgeous seat it's like i mean just absolutely beautiful see it's got that cushion that's worth like a thousand bucks right there so we look down here the lever you see over here, that's four-wheel drive. Yank up on it, kick her into four-wheel drive. This is your diff lock pedal here. You got your brakes, different sides. You can see your throttle pedal down there on the other side. This is your shifter. So you got four speeds. It's a collar shift first and second, and a power shift third and fourth. Or sorry, not power shift. Uh, synchronized shift. This is your reverser. Forward, reverse. I actually really do like this, uh, the way this lever was in these old machines. I don't know why. Maybe because I grew up with it. Just tend to gravitate back to it. So you have your loader control here. This is your transmission cutout. You have your standard dash from uh, the John Deere 80 series machines. Got a fuel gauge, doesn't work. Got a tack, doesn't work. Hour meter, I know does not work it never has lights they kind of work in this machine get your red lever here throttle and you can see the view out the back these machines were nice they did have a really skinny boom so uh looking around them wasn't so bad 
You got your controls here for the hoe and the two little ones down there. Those are for your stabilizers. The pedal over there, the treadle, I guess as you call it, that is for the extend hoe. Push it in and out. Got your two little side windows down there. If you ever see these side windows out on a John Deere and you wonder how does that happen? It's because guys don't clean shit off stabilizers. Bring the stabilizers up and they punch that little window out. As you can see that one's still on the other side. These windows, they do open uh, both ways on the John Deere's. So you can open this front window back or the back window forwards. It's kind of nice. I've always liked it. And we'll sit down on this comfy seat. See the stack. You can see the one cylinder out front for the bucket. This was the first generation of 310 to get the single cylinder, the Y linkage for the loader bucket. And they went to the new kind of more angled streamlined design for the loader linkage itself. Before uh, with the 310s, the A's and the B series, you had twin cylinders for the bucket and a big like 90 degree uh, loader uh, structure, I guess as you call it, for uh, the front bucket. It was not the greatest to see around these machines, space age. The 410, 510, 610, and 710 all got that design for the B series. For some reason, the 310 did not. Uh, this has the sound guard cab with the round front. That was also a first for the 310 series, but once again, the B series got it on the bigger machines. So, yeah, you got your loader controls, amazing visibility. New backhoes don't have this kind of visibility. Like, just a lovely machine to see out of. And the round door, you usually see a bungee cord to tie the door open for air conditioning because this does not have it. Got a fan. I don't remember that fan ever working either. When I was a little kid, that fan didn't work. So yeah, I guess we'll take you out to the front. So, This machine was a bunch of firsts for John Deere. Um, it was the first 310 to offer four-wheel drive. Uh, oddly enough, the B-Series. I don't know why the larger B-Series machines got it first, and the 310 was their most popular selling machine at the time. So this is the angled loader. See, it does not have the 90-degree loader. Maybe I'll go find the 310A. I'll show you the difference. See the Y linkage design for the front bucket. You've got a one-yard front bucket. I believe it's 88 inches wide. The tractor itself is, uh, shit, 82 inches wide. Ha, I looked it up last night. So you see the two lights on the front of the cab. This is a snow removal machine, so it does need lights. And you can see there are no counterweights installed on this hoe. I believe the other one has a 400 pound counterweight on the front. Down here, there is a dipstick right here. Check the oil every morning. Got your oil filter. There is a starting post on the other side because these things always have dead batteries. I don't know why. Always. Got our hydraulic tank here. We have our fuel tank up here in this little door. Fuel tank holds 26 gallons. I know this because the last time I ran this machine on a job away from home, I had to bring like 10 gallons of fuel a day in hydraulic jugs because we didn't have a tidy tank. Fucking bullshit. Anyways, this is our one piece stabilizer. Flip it over. There's your dirt mode. It's hardcore. There's a way you could ah, somehow you flip this bracket around so it'll keep these pads from kicking back over because they will almost always flip back to this side. You can also turn the spade, turn the shoe around so this piece is up at the top, then it'll kick a little differently. You'll see a lot of guys, uh, they'll take the bucket and they'll try and flip these back with the, pat, or the stabilizer halfway down. That's how you end up with broken stabilizers. Want to ask me why I know that? Because I've done it once. So yeah, anyways. This is the 310C. Is, I don't know, it's one of the more favorite John Deere backhoes. It's before they went to the 
curved excavator boom design. I've always liked this machine. Uh, it has a 3.9 liter four cylinder making 65 horsepower. 65! The new 310s come up to like 102 or 103 horse, so I mean, power's changed a lot in the newer machines. Uh, the newer machines also use a little bit larger engine, they're turbocharged, so that does make quite a bit of a difference. But yeah, anyways, figured I'd show you some of the old school DDMB stuff. And that, that ugly, ugly hoe.